Welcome! We've seen in the previous slides the rocks with increasing deformation develop first fracture system distributed over a large portion of the body and eventually become mechanically instable, forming folds or folds. Today we will focus on folds. Folds are characterized by the homogeneous distribution of deformation over the entire structure. Differently from faulting, this means that a rock body does not lose its continuity. Folds can occur at all scales and often form impressive features in the landscape as well as in the subsurface. Folds in the subsurface are very important for applied purposes as they can form traps of hydrocarbon, form seals, or, especially when fractured, reservoirs. In the slide, you can see the most important geometric parameters used to characterize folds. A fold is composed of two flanks or limbs, which are connected by a hinge zone. Depending on the angle between the flanks, the fold can be more or less open. The line parallel to the hinge zone is called the fold axis. The plane which contains the hinge stones of the folded layers is called the axial plane. The surface connecting the hinge stones is the enveloping surface. When this is perpendicular to the axial planes, the folds are called symmetric. This is the case of the fold shown in the slide. Additionally, geometric elements are the wavelength and the amplitude of folds. When layers are shortened, they can develop folds which are convex upward or downward. In the first case, they are called anticlines and have the oldest rock in the core. In the second case, they are called synclines and in the core you will find the younger rocks. From a mechanic point of view, we distinguish two different types of folds, buckle folds and fold band folds. If you understand the mechanics of the specific fold you are interested in, it is much easier to predict its structure, properties and evolution. Buckle folds are generated by horizontal shortening affecting a layer or bundle of layers surrounded by softer lithologies. From the equation, you see that the thicker the folded layer is, the larger the wavelength will be. Similarly, the wavelength of a fold also increases when the viscosity contrast increases. A very different type of fold develops when the layers experiencing compression break along a reverse fold. Typically, these folds run parallel to bedding for a certain distance and then cut across the stratigraphy, eventually reaching another level of flat position. Because of this staircase shape, the hanging wall moving up along the fold will have to adapt to the non-flat geometry of the fold thereby creating a large anticline flanked by two smaller synclines. In the summary of the animation, you can distinguish two different stages occurring with increasing shortening. Initially, the anticline becomes higher and higher. When the hanging wall ramp has passed the photo ramp, then the anticline grows only in width and not anymore in height. As you can see from the slides, the geometry of the passive folds is controlled by the geometry of the thrust surface. Indeed, something very different from what we've seen for buckle folds. Similar to what we've seen for folds, folds rarely come alone. Trains of buckle folds are found in areas where the rigid group of layers is underlain by easily deformed rocks such as evaporites. This is the case, for instance, in the Zagros Mountains of Iran the Salt Range in Pakistan and the Jura Mountains in Switzerland and France. In Matthew, you can see the succession of anticlines and synclines nicely following each other. Systems predominantly composed of passive folds, fold band folds, are very common in the external zones of organic builds. Here, convergence between the plates is accommodated by thrust surfaces with the typical staircase geometry and associated fold band folds like the one shown in the rectangle. 